Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so happy to be here. Today I have a book haul for you guys. I have eight books that I've collected over the last couple of months since my last book haul, but I've really been like restraining myself on books to buy physical copies of. So I've been really working on my Kindle and also I haven't been reading too much, but I wanted to carve out some time today and just kind of sit and talk to you guys about some books. We have some of my favorite books here that I've gotten different copies of, a new series. We've got a lot going on and I'm just really excited to sit here with you guys. So grab a snack, grab some water, and let's just get into it. I think this is the most exciting one and I'm going to start with it first because I just want to talk to you guys about it. So that is the entire Akatar original covers. Oh my goodness. Tracking these books down was honestly just so much fun <laughs> and like a bit of a challenge at some points, but I love them. I want to say just before I get into this, I will give a little bit of a warning on the last book because there is some fan art that is spoilers for the series. So I'm not going to give spoilers for the series until I let you guys know that I'm going to be showing fan art and you're going to be some spoilers. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> Obviously we have the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is about Feyre. She is from the human lands and she ends up being taken into the Fey world after killing a wolf who is actually a Fey shifter. She then gets tossed into this world and is kind of figuring out the Fey dynamics, kind of falling in love with the Fey person that she is staying with. And it's just a really fun introduction to fantasy. I think it's a really easy place for people to start. And this series just has so many twists and turns that you're going to be so entertained. Obviously, you've probably heard of it, so hopefully my very bare bones description was adequate for you guys, but this is the first book in the series. We then have my absolute favorite book in the series, and this blue is just so beautiful in real life. I did not realize just how vibrant and gorgeous it was. The spine is also, I think, my favorite of the series, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just so so good now this is the one that i did end up paying like a little bit probably too much money when i found it but it was still a good price because i'm a university student <laughs> but it was really important to me that this one of all of them was really like pristine and beautiful because it is my favorite in the series and this book does mean so much to me like i know it like the back of my own hand like i can tell you exactly what's happening when it's happening even sometimes down to the chapter i find such home and such comfort in this book and these characters so i really want it <laughs> a pristine copy and I just I could not be more happy with it. I do have a TikTok on this one and the next one of me unboxing them so you guys can find the link to my TikTok down below but this was just such a like amazing moment. I am gonna give you that spoiler warning now because I'm going to be talking about A Court of Wings and Ruin and this one is the Indigo exclusive so it has fan art so it's gonna have characters that are together in it. And if you don't want to know anything about this series, just please skip ahead because I don't want to ruin that for you, but I also have to show you this fan art because it means just so much to me. So before I even read this series, back when I was in high school, I used to watch this YouTuber called Claire Siobhan. She did a lot of Sims create a sim, so like creating characters in the Sims. And for one of the videos she did, she made the Akatar cast of characters. And I had never heard this book series before and would continue not to read it for many years to come. But the first piece of fan art that I ever saw of this series was of the inner circle right here. And so that just has kind of such a nostalgic and special place in my heart. We obviously have this beautiful version of Feyre here as well. So that immediately made this really, really special to me. Just kind of seeing that and having that kind of like tie back to when I loved the video, but I had no clue who these characters were. It was kind of a connection that I had forgot about and it just was really cool. And then when I finally started reading the series years later, I looked at fan art before I read the book because I'm insane. And also I just kind of saw fan art around because I, when I got into reading, I was like, I'm never going to read those books. Like you can't convince me to do it because of how the first book and the second book love interest situation happens. I was like, it's going to be such a waste of the first book. Like I don't understand it. And I had this like very strong opinion. And my friend, she's like, you have to read them. You're going to read them and you're going to love them. And I was like, fine. I finally read them, but it was after I had seen fan art and that was totally okay with me because my favorite version of fan art is this Feyre and Reese. Like this is, this artist's version of Reese is my favorite version of Reese I have ever, ever seen. This fan art is so special to me. It's fan art that made me fall in love with the series. It's fan art that made me start the series. It's how I picture Reese. It's genuinely my favorite thing every time I go on Pinterest and I like scroll through my Akatar fan art and I see this artist's version of Reese or even Morgan and like Amarin and Feyre like I just I am obsessed and I don't even like know how to function 
So the fact that I immediately saw that this was the Indigo exclusive and it had this fan art, there wasn't an option not for me to buy it. This was the first book that I got. And then I was like, well, I need Akamath because that book just means so much to me and this one means so much with the fan art. And then I was like, well, then I can't just have two out of three. So then I need Akatar. And it just kind of snowballed into this giant thing. But it all started here with this just amazing, amazing book and the fan art in this is just so truly special to me and I I just I still I wake up every day and I my bed's right there <laughs> I wake up every day and I look at my bookshelf and normally they're right here and I see them and I smile and honestly it just means a lot <laughs> I know that they're books but these books these characters helped me in a rough time and like is there problems with the series absolutely are is, is the dialogue at times a little bit shall we say cheeky sure but at the end of the day, they are amazing to me, <laughs> but I'm not going to get too sappy. I know I got a little sappy there, but we are going to move on. I need to like go put these back safely because I do not trust myself with like my couch situation that they're not going to like stay okay. So I'm going to be back. Alrighty. So the next book that I have, I got in December for Christmas, which for me is a very big deal because I am an avid reader, but my family, I love them dearly. They're like Ellie. We want to buy you things that are more practical or that maybe you wouldn't buy for yourself so they don't often buy me books but i begged i begged my mom i was like mom i'm gonna be really 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 sad if i don't get this book for christmas could i go buy myself absolutely but did i just desperately want this book and just to get a book for christmas like just one i was like please and she succeeded so i got heartless now, you guys, if you've seen my other YouTube video for my book haul, you would know that I have the entire Chestnut Springs except for Flawless, which is the first book, in the indie published exclusive covers. So I have Heartless, Powerless, Reckless, and Hopeless. But I needed this copy. So now I have three copies of Heartless, which is fine. I have this copy, the indie exclusive, and then the copy on my Kindle. But I really, really wanted to read it physically and I don't want to read my indie exclusive indie published out of print version because apparently I've become a book collector. First these, or first those, now these. I really wanted to read this and I actually just finished reading it again. I love this book. It is just so much fun. This book is a bit of a taboo country small town romance. I'm sure you've heard about it if you've been anywhere on Book Talk or anywhere recently. Elsie Silver is amazing. But these books are just so fun and sassy and like when you're looking to have a good time these books are perfect so this book is about Cade and Willa Cade runs the family farm of Chestnut in Chestnut Springs and he has a young son named Luke he wants Luke to be able to have a nanny during the summer so he doesn't have to be dragged around the ranch and his nanny that he had previously was getting really old and kind of frail so she needed to retire and Cade is on the hunt for a nanny but he doesn't want anyone that he's gonna fall in love with he doesn't want anyone who's attracted to him he wants just someone that's completely focused on Luke enter Willa who was a bartender but her brother closed the bar to do like renovations and she's Summer's best friend from the first book so Willa needed something to do. Willa ends up being Luke's nanny and of course they're not going to fall in love but maybe they do. I don't know this was just such like a fun grumpy sunshine. I like I reread it and this reminded me a lot of my like Akatar reading experience and you're going to be looking at me like Ellie these are this is a country small time romance there's a second book in a fae fantasy series like what is going on and I mean that when it reminded me of Akatar is that I was reading it and I was like this is gonna happen next this is gonna happen next this is gonna happen next and I was just so happy because this and the Akatar book are just like books that when you read them they're just they're perfect books if that makes sense like when you're reading it the order and events that are happening are everything that I love and everything that I want way too long explaining that one book but honestly just read the entire Chestnut Spring series you're not gonna regret it which brings me on to the books that I mentioned in my last book haul that I couldn't wait for that then arrived like a few days later but we have the entire Elsie Silver indie published Gold Rush Ranch series now I know you might be thinking why did you do this? <laughs> and that's because there is something about Elsie Silver's indie published series covers that I just can't get over. There is like, I, I love this cover and I just, I don't know why. It's just beautiful. I love horses. I love all of the things. I just think that there's something so fun about her indie published covers. I think they're amazing. So I wanted to get them before they went out of print because they just got picked up by traditional publishers, so I'm not sure if you can still get these. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like you can get like the later half of the series, but I'm not sure if you can get the first ones because there's something to do with like 
two months before the new covers release they stopped printing the old covers or something like there's I don't know but I'm not sure if they're available but if they are go buy them immediately because they're so pretty and I would say that this is a really enjoyable series now I've only read the first three so I haven't read <laughs> you can't see I haven't read this last one but I'm gonna get to it eventually. I'm just kind of like jumping around in my reading right now. They're all interconnected standalones, but we'll get, I'll get into them individually. So this one is about Billy and Vaughn. I would say it's my least favorite in the series because it is Elsie's debut. Now, is it good? Did I give it three stars? Yes, but is it anything compared to the Chestnut Spring series? No. I didn't relate to Billy as much as a, as a character and this book was a lot of fun. I'm gonna be honest, I can't really remember what happens. To my recollection, this book is about Billy and Vaughn. Vaughn just took over his grandpa's horse racing ranch, <laughs> but it's not actually a ranch, but it's called a ranch, and he needs a horse trainer for this million dollar horse that is just grumpy and won't let anyone ride him. So he ends up kind of like partnering with this other guy who has this connection to Billy. Vaughn hires Billy um, begrudgingly because he thought that she was a man, and Billy ends up bonding with this horse. They end up winning races. Things are wonderful, and that's what I can remember about this book. Obviously, Goodreads probably has a better synopsis than I do, but that's what I can remember. It was fun. It was nice. There wasn't as much build up as Elsie normally has in her books. Like normally, there's like tension, there's groveling, but this one definitely didn't have that. It was definitely kind of like a little bit more insta lovey. At least they're like mental thoughts about each other. It was a fun time, and for a debut, very impressive. We then have a photo finish by her. This is Vaughn's brother's book, and actually, this is Violet Eaton from the Chestnut Spring series book. So she's over here leaving the boys and then Chestnut Springs follows her brothers. So that was kind of fun. This one is about Cole, I think his name is. Names are hard. I'm gonna go with Cole because I don't think I can see it on the back here and that's what we're going with. So Cole is home from the army and he has some trauma in response to that. Violet wants to be less of a golden girl. She's really kind of quiet and soft-spoken, but she's made friends with Billy. Billy kind of pushes her out of her shell. Violet ends up, this is probably the most taboo of Miss Elsie Silver's romances. She ends up taking some scandalous images, talking with Cole online, but then because Cole's not an emotionally a place where he can be supportive to Violet and can be more than what they're currently doing, they end up parting ways and then they meet in person not realizing who is who and it's just like a little bit awkward but then there's a love story it's a fun time we then have my favorite one in the series so this one is about mira who's the vet for gold rush ranch and like the enemy um at the neighboring ranch and they have a sick foal whose mom passed away unfortunately and then Stefan who's at the neighboring ranch has a mom who lost a foal they pair the foals together and now Myra centuries of the vet has to go over to Stefan's ranch and take care of the animals unfortunately there was a small condition to Stefan allowing the animals to be put together at his ranch is that one has to be at his ranch two he has to go on three dates with Moira not Moira Mira sorry that is kind of where that book goes this one is Stefan's sister I think but I don't really know because I haven't read it. And I don't think that I could give worse synopsises, synopsis, synopsises for these books, even if I tried. But you know, that's okay. <laughs> I'm just feeling apparently very chaotic in my reviews. And I don't really, I, I've spent too much time studying. I'm too excited to sit here. Words apparently are really hard, so I'm gonna go. Those are the books that I've recently hauled. I do have funny story that I'm going to be reading immediately. Wild Love by Elsie is also out, but I haven't gotten a physical copy of yet. I got it on my Kindle first because I don't have shelf space. I am so, so desperate for shelf space. So I don't have that, but I'm gonna stop talking now. I am going to go figure out my life. I'm gonna go do some studying for midterms, gonna write my paper, gonna have a good day. I hope that you guys have a lovely day. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do have all of my TikTok, my bookstagram linked down below. I'm super active on TikTok. Haven't been the last few days because dying of university, but I'm super active on TikTok and I'm active on Bookstagram. I just don't post a lot there, but you can always chat with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.